Paris and Washington have a special relationship. After all, France was the first military ally of the yet-to-be-formed United States during the Revolutionary War. But will that relationship hold, or will France and its neighbors find another path? After a three-day visit to China in April, President Macron told reporters that Europe needed what he called strategic autonomy. He didn't want the continent to be a vassal or follower of either China or America. Here's more of my interview with the French president. Let's talk about China. You had a very important trip uh, to China, and after you came back, uh, you said some things that provoked a certain amount of opposition in Europe and particularly the United States. Br most, sure? most specifically, your comment on Taiwan. So I want to ask you, um, you said that you know, Europe needs strategic autonomy. Uh, it should not be a vassal of either China or the U.S. And on Taiwan, we should be careful not to accelerate a crisis that is not ours. Mike Gallagher, the, the head of the China Committee in the House of Representatives, said these comments are disgraceful. Is there anything you want to clarify or change about what you said? Look, I was very clear, and I want to be clear. First, on Taiwan, we are in favor of the status quo, which means we are dead against any aggression, and um, we do respect uh, uh, the, the existing model. And this is what I reiterated uh, with um, President Xi Jinping, and I understand this is exactly the position of President Biden. Second, I never put France in a sort of equal distance vis-à-vis -vis China and the U.S. We are ally in NATO, but through our history with the U.S., we do share the same values. We are economic competitors, but we are closely linked by history, by the alliance, and uh, I mean human relations and friendship. We want to have the best possible relation with China. We want and we have to work with China to fix climate change, biodiversity crisis, and a lot of conflicts in this world. It's clear that we, we don't share all the, same, I mean, all, all the same values, and we have very structural differences on human rights and so on. But we want to find the, the right way to, to respect each other. And, uh, and we are competitors, and our willingness is to encore China in the global order. This is exactly what we are doing here in this conference. So this is just to clarify the sort of uh, perception that China and US could be put at the same level vis-a-vis -vis France, which is not the case. But I want to insist on a point. For me, it's very important to have a much more autonomous Europe and European Union. Why? Because it's useful for the global order. I think it's useful even for the US. It's useful to have a more powerful Europe being in capacity to fix conflicts at its border. I think we are very lucky to have a US administration ready to engage in Ukraine today. Would it be the case in a few years or in a few decades? I'm not sure. The Europeans have to build themselves their capacity to preserve peace on their territory and in their neighborhood. Second, I want us, for our citizens, to be in a situation to be independent in terms of technology, defense, energy. I would say the key structures of normal life. Why? Because nobody knows what could happen in the rest of the world. And if you are dependent on one country, you can be put in a very tricky situation the day you have a, a leadership in this country which decides to completely flip-flop. And, and, and it did happen, guess what? And I experienced yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to be put in such a situation again. So I think it's fair as a European to be very pushy for more autonomy. It's useful for the US from a defense point of view because this is burden sharing. And it's useful for the global order because it's having for the US an ally being in a situation to discuss with some other people and big powers in which, with which it's more difficult for the US. So I think it's not a lack of respect or disgraceful vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the United States, what I said. And by the way, I discussed with President Biden before and after my trip, and we were very clear, and I can say that you have a, a, a president who is extremely clear regarding China and very sensible regarding this, uh, this big interest, and he's not pushing for uh, an increasing of the conflictuality. And this is my last point on, on, on China and your question. 
my main objective was to say, through different initiatives and non-coordinated initiatives, we should not push, push the Chinese to overreact on the short run. After you made those remarks about uh, Taiwan, uh, almost, <laughs> it seemed by coincidence, a poll came out in which they asked Europeans whether they would be willing to fight in Taiwan, over Taiwan. And the overwhelmingly, people in Europe said no. Uh, do you think that vindicates the point you were making about Taiwan? No, I, I mean, I, I'm always very cautious with polls because sometimes they are good, sometimes they are bad. And I think you have to design your strategy uh, referring to the, as well as the long-term interest for everybody. I think we have to be, uh, we have to be very strict on our values and perspective and global order. But I think this world needs less conflictuality because the top priority of our agenda is to fix global problems. I think for me the top priority of the global agenda is trying to fix the existing crisis, fighting against inequalities and poverty, and fixi fixing climate change and biodiversity. This is, here are the key challenges of the decades to come, but especially this decade. I would add to this one, find, I mean, building a good framework and common regulation on artificial intelligence. Here are the key elements of a global agenda. To deliver on this agenda, we need cooperation, and especially we need cooperation between China and the US. We did sign the Paris Agreement because President Xi and President Obama found an agreement a few months before. If there is no agreement between China and the US on all these topics, it's impossible to build a global agenda and to fix these issues. Here are my top priorities. This is why I think for the critical elements where you will increase divisions and conflictuality and tensions between the US and China, we should try to moderate them, to, to find a way to, I mean, discuss quietly and build the relevant fora to decrease tensions because our priority should be to fix this, these ones. Mr. President, always a pleasure to have you on. This is mine. Thank you, Frank.